Jim is a native of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and loves to take walks in nature, especially in springtime, where nature would be dressed in its more colorful dresses. It was a crisp March morning, sunny and warm. The sky was clear and the weather was perfect for a walk. Jim did what he always did, bring his dogs with him for a casual stroll through the forest. Little did he know, it wasn't going to be like any other stroll. Jim is a big lover of nature, and he was lucky enough to have a lot of it in Broken Arrow, where he had the chance to take long walks by the forest, small lakes, and hill climbing. In addition to his great love for nature, Jim has only very few things he loves more than wildlife and scenic walks. One of them is his dogs. Jim loves dogs more than anything. The trio, Jim and his two dogs, would go on the same walking path regularly. They'd enjoy their usual strolls in nature anytime. Just a nature-loving guy with his two canine companions. However, Jim noticed something odd in the creek on that particular day. From a distance, the object looked like a log floating out of the water. But as he took a step closer to have a better look at it, he was able to see some hair. When he got even closer, the thing looked like some type of animal that was trapped in the mud. Jim wasn't sure, so he got even closer, and that's where he saw a small animal struggling. His half-hour stroll was going to take a few hours, as he had to save whatever furry creature was stuck. As Jim approached the mystery mound, he noticed that his dogs were actually acting weird. His dogs were perfectly acclimated into the area, as it was their first walk, so this was especially strange. The dogs started to growl a deep, visceral growl. They even blocked him from walking closer to the mound. It was as though they were protecting him from something, but he didn't know what. Jim followed his intuition and walked towards the creek to find out what was floating. At first, he noticed an animal cage, which was very weird. Who would let an animal cage float in an empty creek? And what animal was kept inside? Jim's first thought was that it was a beaver. It would make sense, as beavers float in the water all the time. But the cage made the claim seem odd. What would a beaver inside a pet cage? Jim peered inside of the cage to see if he could garner any more information about what the cage would housed. His first thought was that the beaver was using the cage as shelter, or maybe it was a few groundhogs using an abandoned cage as their home. The scenarios kept running through Jim's head, what he found out after made him shiver. There were feces everywhere inside of the cage. Jim also found an incredibly dirty blanket in addition to a weighted chain. Someone had purposely done this. A cruel heart had chained an animal to this cage and left them in the wild, but whatever was in it had escaped. Jim saw a whole bunch of weird markings on the cage and it was a huge bite on the side of it. Oddly enough, a beaver came out of the woods and startled him. Following his gut yet again, Jim decided to follow the beaver to the riverbed and see where it would take it. Jim didn't have the faintest idea on what he was doing. He just felt like he needed to do it. Only a couple of feet away from the beaver, there was a struggling animal. It was the same mound that Jim had seen earlier. Jim ventured forward towards the mound. When he got to its level, he saw that the animal was too big to be another beaver. The large creature seemed to be stuck in the mud, and without second thoughts, Jim sprung to action. He had to help the poor animal out, but one thing kept playing in his mind. He still had no idea what he was rescuing. Jim figured that if this was, in fact, a beaver, it would be incredibly territorial. While his gut feeling told him that it probably wasn't a giant beaver, he still needed to be aware of those teeth just in case it decided to break free and bite a part of his hand off out of fear. Beavers bite humans when they have rabies too, so this whole situation could go from hero to zero very quickly, and he would be in great trouble in the matter of seconds only. Jim called over a few people to help him, and one of them actually got bitten. They rushed him to the hospital, as they had no idea what the animal that bit him was, let alone if it was sick or not. The rest of the team, however, ended up staying put to try to get this animal out of the mud. Jim had to come up with a plan to avoid getting attacked again. He realized that in order to prevent any further attacks, he was going to have to cover the animal's head. Jim had no idea how long it had been the creek for, and it was surely alarmed by the number of people trying to get it out. The animal quickly calmed down after the jersey was placed over its head 
which made the rescuing mission a bit easier. Jim needed a plan that could hoist the animal out of the water. His team tried to dig around it, but since the animal was half submerged in the mud, it was incredibly difficult, not to say impossible. The team needed a pulley system to be able to get it out. Unfortunately, though, there wasn't going to be a crane available anytime soon. They had to go with the pulley. The mystery animal refused to budge, despite all of their efforts to get it out. It seemed like it was truly stuck and had no desire of getting free. The team kept trying to get it out, determined to save the animal from inevitable death if it were to stay stuck for longer. Eventually, they started to feel it getting looser, and this gave them the will to try even harder. They gave it one final yank, and the beaver was lifted to safety. But as Jim wiped the animal's face, he stumbled backward. This was no beaver at all. This was a dog. Beneath the mud was a quivering, yet beautiful sheepdog. They weren't messing with a territorial beaver who attacked out of defense. They were dealing with a very scared and lonely dog. Jim decided to call the police, and they were quick to arrive at the scene. What was the most strange thing about the situation was that Jim was led to the dog by the beaver he met near the cage. The more time the guys spent with the dog, the more they realized that the dog was in a very critical situation. Their main priority was to keep the dog warm and comfortable. They decided to call the dog Teddy. When they put a blanket over it, the guys felt that Teddy was only going to get better. It just needed warmth and care to regain its strength. They knew that Teddy had to be taken to a vet for professional treatment and fast. Since Teddy was in no shape to move on its own, they had to figure out a way to move it. They decided to use the resources that they had around them and grabbed a wheelbarrow that was near. Teddy was obviously tired from the exhausting situation it was in, stuck in the mud gasping for air. Jim dialed up the Oklahoma Alliance for Animals, OA, and the team worked quickly to get Teddy into their care. Teddy was still unreceptive to humans, which completely made sense considering the state it's been in for quite a while. While the way it ended up in the creek remains unknown, many credible theories were discussed by the team. The most plausible one was that he got hit by a car, was injured, and his owner left him to die. Another was that Teddy's owner no longer wanted it so he brought him out in a cage and tried to drown it in the waters, hoping it would just go unnoticed. Jim couldn't stop thinking about the single blanket and weight that he found in the dog's cage. The team decided of the name Teddy because of its cuddly appearance. They would have to work on Teddy actually trusting humans again in order for it to be cuddly and friendly, which was still work in progress. Teddy was a dog with multiple lives and incredible luck. The situation that it was put in was horrible. The poor dog had to fight for his life for a long period of time and the chances of someone actually finding it and taking the time to save it were very low. Teddy was also very lucky that the Oklahoma Alliance for Animals took it in. Thankfully, they were able to find a place for the rescue to stay instead of a shelter. If a shelter had received the call for help, they probably would have euthanized it, considering the state it was in. Teddy ended up receiving the vet care needed and was finally in stable condition. In a panic, Teddy had bitten one of the people trying to save him. There was some concern that he might have rabies. After some thorough testing, it was determined that Teddy was healthy. Teddy needed just a couple of days to fully get used to its pen at the OAA. It eventually warmed up to the workers and let them pet it and be affectionate with it. After some more testing, the workers realized that Teddy was probably in a lot of pain, which is why the medication was necessary there was still a major problem that needed to be fixed. Teddy wasn't a very active dog, and due to its physical inactivity, Teddy became severely overweight, which only added to the health problems it was already facing. Overweight dogs are prone to joint, ligament, and bone problems, as well as internal organ dysfunction, high blood pressure, and diabetes. It was going to have an uphill battle to get back to health. As Teddy's story started to get slightly viral, its health started to see some major improvement. Teddy went from being a sluggish pup that was unfriendly to playful and affectionate puppy. Teddy found a very caring person in the receptionist at the OAA. Her name was Jessie. It was almost as if Teddy was excited he was finally getting famous. Well, Doggy is famous anyway, and probably not famous for the right reasons. Teddy is a senior dog 
and prospects for adoption for seniors are quite slim. However, despite the obvious drawbacks to adopting an older dog, there are many benefits to it. For one, you know they're not going to get any bigger. Two, their behavior isn't going to change all that much, since they're already at the peak of their lives. And three, they are typically less likely to bite and can be very docile and affectionate. Thanks to the OAA, Teddy was in good hands, as it is very common for shelters to advertise their residents on social media to get new families for senior dogs. It's a cheap way for shelters, which are often strapped for funding to begin with, to promote themselves and the animals they care for. The OAA actively campaigns to reduce the number of animals euthanized every year, which not only saves animals' lives but also gives cheap spaying and neutering procedures to the public. In the United States, over 6 million animals are processed into the shelter system every year. About 3 million half of those animals are dogs. The sheer volume of strays presents a problem for many shelter spaces. In addition to the lack of space and the low adoption rates, the problem really only has one solution. Shelters end up euthanizing about 700,000 dogs every single year, which is incredibly sad. Thankfully for Teddy, it ended up being adopted. On Teddy's new official Facebook account, this amazing update was posted. Teddy was adopted by one of the only people he liked at Alda Vista Animal Hospital while staying there. He was a bit on the cranky side when he first arrived at the clinic, but now lives in his new home with his mama Jesse and other dogs. We saw her picture a little earlier. Teddy is now in a loving home surrounded by his new family, one in which it can happily spend its last days surrounded by love and care.